guys, this is Clara Hudson of Wall Play Designs, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create invisible buttonholes. And what I mean by that, if you take a look at my sample here, I've created a cabled scarf, and at the end, I have several rows of stockinette, which is just knit on the front and purled on the back. And within this um, fabric, you can see the buttonholes are right there in between two knit stitches. So when I say invisible, I just mean that we're not manipulating our stitch pattern, our stockinette fabric. We're just simply placing a buttonhole in between those two knit stitches. So I'll show you how we do this. Um, I am going to be showing you two different sizes of buttonholes. For this particular neck warmer, I used buttons that were about one and a quarter inch or about 28 millimeters. So I needed a bigger buttonhole. As you can see, it fits perfectly and you can't see any manipulation of that stockinette uh, fabric and so I'll be showing you that size buttonhole and then I'll also show you another hole that's a, a little smaller um, that would be appropriate for about half inch to about seven eighths inch buttons like this size so I'll show you both of those and I do have a small sample here and the way we're going to be working for the larger buttonhole is you're going to create your stockinette in your pattern. That's just the easiest way to create these buttonholes. And what we've done is we've done a right side row in knit all the way across. And what I did is I went ahead and put stitch markers where I want to place each buttonhole. So if you look here, I went four knit stitches in and placed a marker where I want one of my buttonholes to appear and then another four stitches my second buttonhole will go here another four stitches and my third buttonhole and then four net stitches for the end of the row so now we're gonna place our yarn overs for our buttonholes on the wrong side of our work so I'm simply gonna work in pattern this where you can see it better so I'll knit my first two stitches in garter, and then I'm going to purl over to my first stitch marker, which is right here. Now for the larger buttonhole, what you're gonna do is you're gonna yarn over your right hand needle twice. And then we can actually drop our stitch marker. We're done with that. Now we will purl over to our second stitch marker where we wanna place our second buttonhole right there and we can remove that again double yarn over your right hand needle yarn to the front and work over to our last and third buttonhole or stitch marker right there we'll drop that marker and I'm again going to yarn over twice my right hand needle and I'll go ahead and finish this row last two stitches knit Okay, so we will turn our work to the right side. And if you look here, you can see where our holes were created in between those stitches. But now we have to contend with these two yarn overs. We have to close those up. So I'm gonna work in pattern, knitting the first two stitches. Now, when you get to the knit stitch that happens before the first yarn over, of your two yarn overs, you're going to be working that knit stitch together with the first yarn over. So we're decreasing two stitches to one. And the way we'll do that is we will slip the first stitch knitwise onto our right hand needle, slip the second yarn over knitwise, and carefully place both of those stitches onto your left hand needle purlwise and knit them together through the back loop. So basically you're creating a slip slip knit. Now as you can see it's easy to lose that second yarn over so you want to make sure that stays on your needle because now to rotate my work here you can see we have that second yarn over and then the next knit stitch in our pattern. Now we're going to be knitting those two stitches together to de decrease the stitch count back to one. So you'll simply insert your right hand needle from left to right through both stitches on your left hand needle and knit them together. 
and remove that from your needle. And if you look here, it looks a little sloppy, <laughs> but this will all block out when you're done with your project. But you can see we've created a buttonhole in between these two rows of knit stitches. So I'm gonna show that to you again. We'll work over to the stitch before our first yarn over as before. So here's that knit stitch and here's our first yarn over. So we will slip. And another way you can do this is you can slip, knit that first yarn over, and then pass your slip stitch over. That's another way to do a slip slip knit. So either way, it's up to you. And then we have reached our second yarn over and the knit stitch after it, and we will knit those two together. So we've created our second buttonhole. I'll show you one last time here with our third buttonhole. Stop at the knit stitch before the first yarn over. Slip, slip very carefully. Knit those two together through the back loop. And then the second yarn over and the knit stitch after it, knit those two together. So there's our third buttonhole and I'll finish this row. And now that we're done with our buttonholes, we're simply going to continue working our particular pattern. And again, I'm working the two first stitches of this neck warmer and garter stitch. So I'll purl the rest. And then I will knit the last two stitches. And if you're curious in this particular pattern, it is the Fisherman's Wife Neck Warmer, which is available in my Etsy shop and on Ravelry. But if you take a look, we have completed the invisible buttonholes. And as I said, this will all block out quite nicely after you soak your neck warmer and pin it out. But the reason I say invisible, they're not, of course, obviously not completely invisible because you can see your buttonhole because they are a buttonhole but they're invisible because they do not impede on your particular stitch or your fabric that you're working in so there's our yarn overs and again these are perfect for your larger buttons that are anywhere between an inch and two inches because this can really stretch out if you need it to but because of the shaping that we created on both sides of those yarn overs, it just closes back up the fabric. So that's a great solution for your larger buttonholes. But now I'm going to show you how to create smaller invisible button holes that are more appropriate for say half inch to uh, three quarters or seven eighths of an inch. Okay, so now I will show you how to do the smaller buttonhole. And as you can see, I went ahead and placed my stitch markers where I want to place each of those buttonholes. But for the smaller buttonhole, I have finished on a wrong side row of my rows of stockinette. And now I'm going to begin on a right side row, placing those buttonholes. So again, I'm just going to knit the first two stitches, since those are in garter. And I will work over to that first stitch marker. And for the stitch before my stitch marker, I'm actually going to slip that for the beginning of my slip slip knit. But for the second part, I'm actually going to pick up the bar that appears between these two knit stitches. And I'm going to pick that bar up with my right needle tip, I'm going to knit that bar. So I now have two stitches on my right hand needle and I'm going to place my left hand needle tip over into that first slipped stitch and pass it over that stitch that I picked up from the bar. So there's my first decrease. And now I'm gonna get rid of that stitch marker. Now with the knit stitch to the left of this bar, I'm going to take my left hand needle and I'm going to insert it into that bar like so, picking it up. And now I have two stitches on my left hand needle and I will, this, this part's a little difficult because it's going to be very tight, but you're just going to take your right hand needle tip and loosen up 
that knit stitch. Get it nice and loose without dropping that bar. And now we can work a knit two together with the two stitches on our left hand needle. And like I said, it's gonna be tight. There we go, try not to split my plies. Okay, so if you look, we've created a buttonhole, a very small one, using that bar between our two knit stitches where we placed our buttonhole. So I'm gonna show that to you again. So work to one stitch before your stitch marker. Slip that stitch knitwise. Insert your right hand needle through the bar between these two stitches and knit it. And then pass that slipped stitch over the knit stitch. So drop our stitch marker. And again, we're going to use our left hand needle this time to pick up that bar and we're gonna knit the bar together with the next knit stitch. And we'll just loosen up that knit stitch with our right hand needle tip. Okay, knit two together. And there's our second buttonhole completed. So again, we'll do our third and last buttonhole. Knit the last knit stitch before where you wanna place your buttonhole. We'll slip it knitwise. Knit into that bar, pass the slip stitch over the knit stitch. We'll drop our stitch marker. Okay, we'll use our left hand needle to pick up that bar, yarn to the back, loosen up that knit stitch and knit two together. There we go, and then we will finish this row so you can see how our buttonholes turned out. So if I lay this out here for you, you can see, again, we have created invisible buttonholes because we've simply hidden them in between our stockinette fabric on our garment here. And if you stretch it out, you can see it's the perfect size for about a half inch button to seven eighths. You could probably even fit a one inch, but it would be a little tight. And you can see that they, it's pretty much invisible. They're just tucked away in our fabric. And any, any loose stitches that you see in our fabric can easily be pulled out with your needle tip and they'll easily block out when you're finished. But that is how you create invisible buttonholes. I hope this technique helps you guys out. Thanks so much for watching.